huge thanks to these stores and teams for sponsoring my trip to ARG Nationals. Uh, it's a really awesome opportunity. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the help of these guys. So please go down to the description, find the links, check them out, show them some love. I'd really appreciate it. These guys all put in a lot of work to help get me there. So I'm really appreciative of it. So with that, let's get on to the content. Hey there guys, this is DMO73 bringing you a feature match for the week. Um, we have Nick Carter on the left playing Red Reflect Refrain Aggro and Brian Hewlett on the right playing Reflect Refrain Reanimator. This is a black, white, red reanimator list. Um, just as a heads up, these guys are playing pre-Reflect Refrain Errata, so they are going to be... Um, using the reflect refrain reflect triggered on both their turns but reminder that as of february 1st you can only use reflect uh reflects zero cost ability on your own turn so it looks like um either i think nick got the die roll there uh and so he will probably be going first um so we'll just see we'll see how this goes so he's got that change the world, uh, a hunter. Looks like he's got at least a Lancelot up. He does have the reflector frame. Apologize for the glare. Oh, Brian is going to be going first. So we see that change the world from Brian. He's getting good second counter uh, filtering. Trying to get as many counters as he can there right from the start. And it's that dark uh, Squarespace stone and place a Guinevere off the top. This is to help him discard things and get him down to the bottom of his, uh, into his graveyard so that he can reanimate them. Not a bad start for a reanimator list to change the world's and a Gwen to be able to start throwing stuff into the ground. Um, We'll just have to see if it's able to survive. So basic redstone for Nick. Plays a Levitine. Discards a Levitine for a second red will and actually puts out a Lancelot turn one. This is a very, very powerful play against a reanimator list. Um, reanimator lists tend to be a little slower. Uh, and so... Um, having that aggression from a Lancelot on turn one is very, very powerful. Uh, you see he uh, actually pumped up his um, Lancelot using Reflect Refrain to make it 800 damage instead of just the 600. Uh, so a very, very strong start for Nick. Um, Brian's going to go ahead and try and get things moving by uh, sacking off his own Guinevere and then doing a filter to try to see what he can get. I don't know if I would have done that. I would have just kind of maybe waited until next turn um, to at least see what what I can do. Um, but I'm not Brian. <laughs> so looks like he's going to play that 40 Thieves. So two cards into his hand and then two cards into his grave. Oh, see that Genesis creation and, and a Book of Ivon is great. So, sweet, that's awesome there in terms of you got a Yamada and a Book of Ivon in Grave. Uh, two more counters onto his Reflect Refrain, so already sitting at quite a few counters there. Another filter coming out. Ooh, that Soul Hunt is pretty, pretty powerful. I would go ahead and keep that, maybe try to play that next turn. Or the Arthur in his graveyard is also really good. I think he might have filtered the Arthur away though. I don't know if I would have done that. Arthur and Yamada don't necessarily blend together, um, but with Reflect Refrain being able to pump up Yamada, it's not as big of a deal. Um, you can have Arthur and Yamada out on the field at the same time and still make a lot of impact. So that orb finally comes out from Nick. He's got a second stone. Looks like we see a split heaven and earth. 
He's gonna pump up his. He's gonna pump up his Lancelot and then use his two red will to pump up Lancelot even more, burning uh, the going in for the attack and burning the 40 thieves with the damage and then getting a thousand damage in. So Nick is playing this very very fast, um, which is fine because if he takes too long, uh, a reanimator list can, especially since he sees that Yamada in grave. If he takes too long, he knows that his opponent's going to be able to pull out the Yamada, um, and that's going to be hard for him to deal with. Reflect Refrain naturally allows Yamada to deal 400 damage a hit um, without having to do any kind of like extra work. So three orbs and three Darkness Stones, three Scorched Bales against a tapped out Nick. So there's that Book of Ibon. Yep, so here comes Yamada. He's actually going to filter with, with uh, Reflect Refrain instead. So the yeah. I don't know why he did that necessarily. I would have, in this situation, pumped up Yamada and just gone for Nick's gone for Nick's life. Um, that would have been eight attacks at 400 damage a pop. That'd be 3,200. Nick just passes. So he so played Yamada. Did he forget that Yamada has swiftness? Um, because he could have attacked for 3,200 damage against uh, against Nick that turn. That would have been free. Um, eight attacks and 400 uh, damage and attack. Um, he also could have killed the Lancelot without too much fear. Uh, you know, hit twice uh, and then hit six times at uh, Nick's face. Still would have been a ton of damage. The, Yamat the Lancelot would have been gone. Um, so I don't necessarily know why that ha why he didn't go in there. Because now Nick's in a, a position where if he has any kind of way to manipulate the outcome, especially with the swiftness, uh, with Reflect Refrain, yeah, because he's going to be able to flip Reflect Refrain uh, and just bounce the Yamada back to Brian's hands. So almost that that work was almost for nothing. That Book of Ivan just got wasted in a sense. Let me see that looks like a second Lancelot. Yeah, second Lancelot. So just 1,200 damage right there against Brian down to a thousand. Another orb. It's gonna put on a counter. Uh. I don't know why Nick drew a card there. I don't think he realized that he has to pay a green will to be able to draw a card. I'll get on him about that later. Suddenly just... Oh, he recognized it. Uh, but still, he should... Drawing extra cards violation. <laughs> At this point, though, I'm not quite sure that it matters. Um, Brian's in a pretty bad way. He lost his Yamada. He doesn't have a Yamada in grade. Staring down two Lancelots. And a flipped uh, refrain that has lots of counters. Filtering. Or, oh, just drawing for turn. So that fourth stone. Genesis creation doesn't do much help here right now, uh, and unfortunately we know that he, uh, Nick has that split heaven and earth in his hand, so literally if uh, Brian taps out and doesn't flip over reflect refrain um, to cancel a spell, which we know he doesn't because he's tapped for stone, uh, Nick's just going to play split heaven and earth. Um, so at this point, uh, this game is definitely in Nick's favor, if that is a split heaven and earth in his hand. But he can also just search for a split heaven and earth using his refrain. Um, so the powerful part about Nick's list is he can just search for a burn spell if he needs it to finish the game off. 
He gets that fourth orb from Brian, but again, it's not going to do much to it good because he hasn't been flipping, ref hasn't been flipping refrain uh, to make use of the counter. So those are just essentially just stacked uh, and sitting there. Oh, so he's, he's going to flip back over to reflect at the end of Brian's turn and do a filter. Yeah, see, he's got that split heaven and earth, and it looks like and a thunder. So nothing really that uh, Brian's going to be able to do to survive the damage. Oh, and there was another Lancelot that he drew into. So just all in all, yeah, it's pretty much over at this point. Nick's going to reveal the split and pay two for the split, and uh, Brian knows he can't do anything, so we move on to game two. So hopefully in this game, Brian will actually be able to pull off a mod of play um, and not miss his attack, chance to attack. Um, that was really interesting. I don't know what his, his goal was there. Um, he would have been in a really strong position had he uh, not filtered uh, and brought back the Yamada and then just pumped it to 400, 2200, killed the Lancelot and swung at Nick. Um, almost would have been an immediate kind of recovery. Sure, Nick could have bounced it next turn still, but Nick would have still been in very low life. And neither one of them has flipped to the ruler. Brian's gonna be on the play. See that bow? See a bow? Filters, oh, and he has that second bow, so that's going to help him a lot to slow this game down. He needs to remember to put a card back in the bottom of his deck. Looks like he decided to put, pitch the uh, Genesis creation, which in this instance is fine. He's going to get a bunch more stuff to the grave. And it's better to have that second bow to be able to stop kind of whatever Nick throws at, uh, throws at him. So you see there, I see Ruke, Kathuga, Kathuga from uh, Nick, which normally is a very, very powerful, aggressive play to begin with. Um, the problem is that double bow essentially negates that whole line of play. So we'll see if Nick even tries. Calls his first stone. It's a basic red. Plays, uh, plays Rook Egg, incarnates it for Cthuga. Uh He's trying to do some shortcutting here by just swinging in before he does his search. Like, while he does his search, he should complete the search first. Um, our locals are pretty smooth about being fine with shortcutting. Um, but keep in mind that if you are doing this, if you incarnate the uh, the root cake into a, a creature, a Cthulhu, you have to do the search before you get the attack in. Um... So the Cthulhu, he swung in with the Cthulhu, even though he knew that there was two bows on it in his way, um, which is not, I don't necessarily agree with that line of play. I think he could have baited out those bows in a different way. Um, just having the 5-5 five five is a powerful way to start. But again, he's trying to play fast, so that was also a reason why he had to waste, you know, Brian had to use both of his bow counters to be able to make that play. Um, so now Nick only has to deal with, you know, one more hit, and he knows he has double uh, a Cthulhu and a Lancelot in his hand, so he can make some aggressive plays happen. So we see a Yamata, another Yamada and a um, ne uh, Necromancy of the Undead Lord going to grave. Let's see a filter. We know he's got Genesis Creation and the Book of Ivan, so next turn we should be seeing a Yamada already. Next, gonna filter at the end of Brian's turn. Going into his own turn and tapping for a stone, gets that second red.
So see a rope with a fire rat come out. So this is a really good play for Nick. He sees that Yamada, he knows the necromancy's there. Um, rope with a fire rat's gonna get him to just be able to stop Yamada anytime it comes out. He's gonna filter, gets that orb. So you guys double Lancelot, split heaven and earth, Cthulhu. Doesn't really need the Cthulhu right now, he knows it's just gonna die anyway. Passes over to Brian. Who's gonna filter at the start of, or at the end of, uh, in the next turn and then draw into his own turn? This is one of the reasons why Blessed Holy Wolf has become a pretty prominent card. Um, right now, to be able to pop additions, uh, I don't necessarily know if Brian has a way to deal with that Robe of the Fire Rat, in a sense. Uh, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't have a way to stop the Robe, then that Yamada is essentially never going to get damaged. It doesn't matter how much he, how much pressure he puts on, it's never going to be able to get through. So at that point, he would have to rely on his Arthurs. Uh, in order to be able to get the damage. He actually filtered away the Genesis creation, but he had another one in his hand. So it looks like he has Guinevere, 40 Thieves. He's going to attempt to swing in, and Nick is going to, because he knows Yamada's not going to be able to come out this turn, use that Robe of the Fire Rat. So Nick's playing this really, really tight, negating pretty much the perfect lines of play um, from Brian. Um, I would assume that he sideboarded in the robes, knowing that Yamada was a card. Um, and he just happened to have it pretty early. But again, that's one of the benefits of Reflect pre errata is you can filter so much that you see your sideboard cards a lot. See that change the world? Come out for Nick. So now he's going to be able to start generating more counters. Um, tapped his Levitine. Oh, okay. So he tapped his Levitine to create the cloud effect. Uh, I would assume it's because he has a Rook Egg in hand and he wants to be able to sacrifice it. He's going to attempt to swing in for 600 damage and it's going to get bowed. Um, he has that rapid growth in his hand, it looks like. Oh no, that's a Snow White. It's a Snow White and a Thunder, and a Lancelot in his hand. I don't really know why he tapped his Levitine. I would imagine so that he could sacrifice some. I mean, if he had a Rook Egg, it would make sense. He could play Rook Egg, sacrifice it to Levitine to get a free search off, but he, he didn't do that. So, and then he's going to filter. Oh, there's the Rook Egg. Let's see if he keeps it. But imagine at this point in the game, Snow White's not terribly important. Um, he knows that, uh, yeah, he knows that the bows are no no longer in his way, so Lancelot's got to be able to swing in aggressively. Uh, I probably would have played the root egg, honestly, myself, to generate some more advantage. But he also has the thunder, so he might be trying to save the thunder for situations that are better off for him that way. Brian has that fourth stone. Uh, I don't know what he called for it. I would imagine he's calling it red um, because at this point he'll be able to do a Genesis creation. Um, so next turn he'd be able to pump up Yamada to a 6-6. Six, six. He's actually taking a uh, slower approach, probably trying to fill up his graveyard with something more important um, so that he can hit it with the Book of Ibon. So in Genesis creation into Yamada with Book of Ibon. Hitting a second card. Probably hoping for an Arthur. Because again, with the Necromancies, a second Necromancy too, Arthur becomes essentially null and void to his Yamada. So if he can hit Yamada with um, Arthur, then he's in pretty good shape. 
Fortunately, he did not. He did not see the Arthur from there. And he knows at this point that orbs aren't necessarily as important because he's also not flipping, so he, he doesn't really need them as much. So Nick's gonna take the first 400 damage and then negate the second with his robe. Again, because he knows that Yamada's not gonna be a threat. Gonna stack an untapped trigger on one of his Forty Thieves so that it's able to protect him a little bit easier. Um, Nick is going to use his one extra will to Thunder to get one of the Forty Thieves out of the way for his big push next turn. And he's gonna filter as well. See the little red or little dread. <clears throat> John to his turn. You see, it looks like he drew into that split heaven and earth, which means he now only has to worry about getting um, Brian down to at least 1200. If Brian keeps tapping for special stones, then the more he taps for special stones, the less damage Nick has to have, have put on board in order to do lethal. Let's tap him for a second stone. Gonna tap two for the light slot. It's going to filter with reflect refrain. Oh no, he's just gonna pump up Lancelot again. And do the same thing he did before. Pump up Lancelot. Uh, pump it up again with his own will. So he burns one of the forty thieves. Uh, the second forty thieves blocks it. Um. He's gonna just put another counter on his reflector fane to change the world. He's gonna pass to Brian. Brian really needs to see an Arthur here shortly and to somehow manage to be able to get it to the grave. So, as it stands at this point, like I said, he really, he really needs to get that Arthur um, to be able to make a big play happen. Because if he can get that Arthur and the Yavada to the grave, it's pretty much going to be the only way to save himself. Um, he might be thinking about whether or not he wants to flip this turn, because he could search for the Arthur. Um, but again, that has to leave him with a second turn to just kind of sit, sit there. And he has to be able to discard it as well. But he can use his will to maybe play a Guinevere to put himself in a position where he can. Yeah, okay, so here comes the flip. He's probably thinking about being able to search next turn. Um, play another counter on it with the Change the World. Not the best line there. Gonna go ahead and cast the Genesis Creation right now. Um, if he had a realm of pure spirits in his graveyard, he would have also been in a fine shape because then Yamada wouldn't have been able to be targeted by the robe, uh, and it's just free extra damage. Um, at this point, though, uh, Yamada is fair game to be targeted by pretty much everything. So those double necromancies are going to come out. Niflheim would also benefit, but also pump up Yamada. But because of that rope with the fire rat, um, all of that damage is just going to be negated. That actually would have been lethal if that robe hadn't been there. 
because Yamada could have easily been a 800-800. Even 600-600 attacking 8 times is lethal, so... Brian might be trying to see if he can get a uh, search for a Realm of Pure Spirits and play it next turn. Um, stalling to see if he can survive. Um, but this is actually a pretty devastating play from Nick. He plays Little Dread with the 2 drop Awakening. This is actually going to let him uh, let Nick steal the Yamada. This puts Brian in a really bad way. He either lets the Yamada get stolen, um, he has no way to cancel the summon, but, uh, or he bounces his own Yamada to prevent it from killing him. So, pretty bad position for Brian. is going to go ahead and have to bounce his own Yamada, which is again pretty unfortunate so that Yamada has just never been able to get damage in. Done its job. It's hitting the field both games, but it's never been able to do its job. And when that's your win condition um, for the deck, that's pretty rough. He's going to swing in 600, which gets blocked by the... Uh, 40 thieves. He's going to stack an untapped trigger on this land slot, I believe. Let's get another counter. And then moves in to the end of his turn. So Brian's going to go ahead and flip back. Uh, to reflect at this point, um, it's going to sack off Niflheim to mill five more cards. Unfortunately, no Yamada in there, and all he's got in his hand is Genesis Creation and uh, a y Yamada. Or a Stoning Death and Yamada. If he'd had the Stoning Death, that, that would have been much better for him. Because um, he could have just stoned his own. Uh, Yamada killed it and then brought it back next turn. But I don't think he did. I think it's a, another Genesis creation. He's going to go ahead and pay 200 to draw a card. I missed the life damage there. Brian's actually at uh, 38. So there's that Arthur um, and a Realm of Pure Spirits. Unfortunately, this comes a little bit too late um, as he's even if he taps for a stone, he's not going to be able to play any kind of resurrection effect this game or this turn. At this point, all Brian can really do is uh, try to shore up his defenses in order to be able to survive till next turn and make a big push there. Nick's gonna do a filter. Picking what he wants to send to the bottom. Probably one of those hunters. Yep. Looks like he has thunder split. Rapid growth, Lancelot. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of damage here. That rapid growth immediately makes Lancelot able to be able to burn something. Phase one of his green. Green will give the Lancelot 1,000 or 400, 400. Swings in, burns the Prowler. 
Gonna stoning to death with Lancelot. Prowler would still get killed because of the burn damage still going through. Nick's gonna play a second Lancelot, it seems. And he's gonna use the rapid growth to pump it up. He wants to just stack in that damage as fast as possible. He has a valid target that he can burn. Um, he's just gonna swing in for a thousand, burn his own little red. A thousand damage to Brian. This is actually put him down at 28 because of that burn da uh, self burn from drawing a card and then 800. Puts him down to 2000, but it's only 22 on the screen. So Nick's got that thunder in his hand. Uh, he hasn't tapped for Estonia this turn. If I was Nick in this position, I would... My opponent only has five stones. Um, Sex untap trigger on the Lancelot. I would flip, yep, like he's going to do, so that next turn heal. Or even this turn, he can just search for a... Uh, you can just search for a... You can even double search for double split at this point because you could uh, tap, do four counters, search... Um, Use the orb to untap, do another search for uh, a second split, and then essentially again just puts him in a position where his opponent can't can't do anything because Brian doesn't seem to have any cancel spells. So he did search for the splits. So he's got thunder split in hand. At this point, with that 200 points that he's burned himself, uh, Thunder Split is actually completely lethal because uh, it'll be 15 from Split and 5 from Thunder. And the untap happens and he passes turn. Brian's gonna filter. Sees a second Yamada, goes to the grave. You want to see that Prowler Niflheim, so another two cards are going to get milled. Another Prowler at another uh, Realm of Pure Spirits, so no help to Brian there in terms of reanimating anything. It's going to filter. Oh, he was one card short of getting a Yamada to the grave. That's really unfortunate. At this point, a Genesis creation with Roma Pure Spirit seems like the best move, but he's just going to pass. Not even flipping his Reflect. That was a serious misplay on the side of Brian if he, uh, if he had simply flipped over the reflects then he would have been able to cancel the split heavens and the burn spells and stuff um, but unfortunately because he stayed on reflect side that, that's gonna, not going to be able to happen and Nick's going to be able to just finish the game with burn so 500 damage from thunder after bouncing the prowler with his own reflect or his own refrain Getting lots of counters, shows the split, and uh, and he's going to be able to make all those swings in, but in this case, because my life totals was off, the 1500 from split is exactly enough for lethal. And so there you have it guys, that is Red Reflect Refrain Aggro versus Reflect Refrain Reanimator. Uh, let me know what you thought about the decks in the comments down below. Like, comment, and subscribe as always. Uh, deck profile, at least for the Red Red uh, Railroad Aggro, will be up. Um, on Saturday, and uh, as always guys, this is DMO73, signing off.